Well, Zorro, I don't want to alarm you, but uh, the 3 1 win over Airdrie that Doogie Barn touched upon there, it's uh, prob prob well, it's arguably the greatest game ever seen at M uh, McDermott Park. It was 26 years ago this week. 26 years ago. Do you have. Uh, recollections of that because that was a game that you had to win to give yourselves any chance of pegging back Owen Coyle and Airdrie in that uh, race for the, the title. Yeah absolutely I mean that game was, was a do or die game for us really because I think we were chasing, chasing Airdrie at the time I was working part time there was a guy in the factory I worked in he was actually playing for Airdrie Big Derek Grant so there was a bit of rivalry all week building up to the game um, and then obviously you know, we pummeled them for a, you know, a good part of the game and then we went behind and it just looked like it wasn't happening even though we'd hit the bar two or three times and obviously they just to turn it round late on was pretty special, you know, it was you know, it was an unbelievable atmosphere the sun was shining it was just, you know, after we won the game Airdrie just seemed to fold after that it was almost like a title clinching clinching game yeah it was brilliant to play in but uh, what, what was it like uh, playing under Alec Taunton because he did at that particular time I mean it was probably rare even then to have two wingers essentially in your team yeah well it was Alec's philosophy was always attacking football you know so it was great for us being a, you know being attack minded that we could go and do our stuff but we could only do that if we had guys behind us that were going to you know shut the door at the back and we had Big Doogie and other guys there that allowed me, Roddy and Murray to go and do our stuff, eh? so we had to have that freedom, but you know, you need that base behind you to, to do that. We talked about uh, with Doogie the, the cup semi-final against Rangers, but uh, that kind of has mixed memories for yourself, doesn't it? Yeah, very much. Um, I think I scored a few goals up to the semi-final. We were part-time at the time, never played against any big teams at that time, and obviously I got a bad injury 10 days before the the semi-final yeah it was mixed memories it was good build up you know going along towards Parkhead that day um, there's a wee story from the Christmas night out that would you know I think it was at the Lovett Hotel actually and we all started singing we had a wee sing song at the end of the night and Paul Cherry started singing Bonnie Wee Jeannie McCall and Anyway, that was his song, so we're, 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 go we're driving up to Parkhead that day, you know, and the place is bouncing, and, you know, it's quarter to two, we're just about ready to go into Parkhead, and Cher starts singing Bonnie Wee Jeannie McCall, and the bus, so then we all just started singing Bonnie Wee Jeannie McCall, it was like a supporters bus <laughs> turning up to Parkhead, it was, the Rangers fans were all thinking, what's going on here, it was just absolutely crazy, you know, so to miss out, you know, I was in tears in the stand, you know, and I had uh, it was a, a big wrench to, to miss that game, yeah. And then obviously there was, a, well, there, Alec was desperately wanting you to be ready for, for, for the replay, which you did play in, but uh, I don't think you were match fit, were you? Oh, no, nowhere near it, no. One leg, yeah, yeah but that's history, yeah, so I think all the boys were out in their, their legs anyway, you know, they'd put such, such a great effort in on the Saturday and... Um, you know, I was up there with them, even though I hadn't played. Yeah. There's some of the current players that will empathise with the, the, the defeats in cup semi-finals, but the, the, must have been a bitter one when you lost to Dundee United at East End Park, because uh, I think you were the better team, and there was definitely a penalty claim denied that day. Yeah, yeah, that was a sore one to take. Um, to be honest, I don't think it was a great game. I think it was pretty even, could have went any, anyway, but yeah, there was a shot late on when we were 2-1 down, when I think we Murray crossed it, and I caught it flush in the volley and Dave Bowman's clearly stuck his arm out and stopped it from going in the net. And that's one of the things, eh? it's just football, it's not meant to be. And just finally, of all the goals that you scored, I take it the Wraith Rovers goal is, is the best. Could you talk us through it? Well, I mean, it was the best in the fact that, you know, the fans loved it and it was, but, you know, you know, scoring the clincher in the air to win, to win promotion was probably just as for me, you know, just as memorable as, as the Wraith one, but you know, the Wraith one was just one of these things, I just picked the ball up and thought I'll attack the defender and then head down before I know it there's another defender on it, one man and, then, and so on, and just got to the 18 yard box and thought I can't run any further, <laughs> I'm knackered I was just that was actually my left foot, I didn't even have the energy to switch it on to my right foot, I thought I'll just oh, I'll just have a swing on my left and yeah, managed to curl it in the top corner, so yeah, it was very good. 
And uh, it must, uh, you, I know you come along to St. Johnson game still, and it must give you a, a bit of a thrill that you still have your name chanted uh, at grounds years after you've retired from football. Well, you know, when I left St. Johnson, I left in the close season and never really had a chance to thank the supporters for the unbelievable support they gave me when I was at the club, when I left the club, and even still now, it's incredible. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the fans for the support they've given me over the, over the years. Unbelievable. Thank you very much. Steve Masquerie, Zorro, ladies and gentlemen.